So it's a, a very different uh, environment. Uh, the trend, in especially in the ICT industry or the O&O industry or the BPO industry, has been to import CEOs in the recent years. No? And of course, the local managers, the local uh, owners of the company, they would prefer that we have a local. These expats that come in and take charge of a company, yeah. uh, what would you recommend that they do to adjust and fit in very quickly? The um, <coughs> yeah, uh, personal the, the like culture, you, for example. Yeah. yeah, the culture is different, and, and it is a. It, it was a very common situation where someone came from pick on Germany or California and they say well this is the way we do it in California so right. this is the way we should do it here and the result was catastrophic in, yeah. in many uh, cases so I think most of the guys now though are more cautious and and realistic about learning the the culture they need to learn a bit about the history a bit about the how, how family structure is is mm. here and talking with others who are you know, longer term here, and to, to, to learn about the local environment, this is what is, is critical to, uh, to success. Yeah. But more and more now, what we're seeing, uh, I'll just continue, is, is companies are, are less interested in bringing expats over. Correct. And they want to move up the... Uh, cultivate, the cultivate managers. leadership yeah. here. So I, yeah. yeah. I have a little clip here of a Western CEO, and I'd just like you to tell me if this will work in the Philippine scenario or not. So uh, we we'll just put that video up and we'd like your opinion about it, if you don't mind. All right, so the question is, would you recommend that Filipino CEOs um, emulate that behavior? No, I would not think uh, that is a good thing to do. A good thing to do in Philippines, yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, Richard, I have two questions for you. Uh, sometime in your past, you did the biggest recruitment, technology recruitment in Korea. I want you to tell me about that. And uh, I want you to slide the conversation right into the awards event that you're holding next month. So, okay. Yeah. Korea. Korea. Yeah, yeah. Korea yeah. That was, well. What year was this? This was in the late, uh, late 90s, maybe 1998, I would yeah. think, after the Asian crisis was taking impact right. in, uh, yeah. in uh, Korea. <clears throat> A lot of people were out of work and so forth. And, but there was a lot of demand for Technolo high quality technology people yeah, that they needed yeah. in, in North America. So yeah. a number of companies, IBM was one, and, and a number of the Canadian uh, banks sent us, me, over there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, uh, we, I, I must have interviewed hundreds of people who came in train loads from all over. Koreans, the speaking Koreans. And you moved them to North America? Yes, correct. But we, were, we needed people who could speak English, because unlike in Philippines, where people, you know, Almost speak everybody does, English. Yep. In Korea, it's, it's much more difficult. The language is, is very different and so forth. Um, so it was a very challenging, but very fascinating <coughs> and interesting uh, project. And in Korean television, they put us on TV and said that we were the largest uh, technology Recruiters. recruiting uh, project in, <laughs> in history. Um, yeah, but a lot of people got got good jobs of there during a difficult time for, mm -hmm. for Koreans. And Canadian companies got motivated <coughs> good people mm -hmm. to do, uh, you know, and very technically advanced uh, people to do the work that they needed as well. So. And uh, now you are running or about <coughs> to launch the first Asia CEO Awards. Right. Would you like to tell us about that? 
Sure. It. Um, well, how much time do I have? <laughs> you you take, take your time. I'll stop you when I have to stop you. Okay. okay. As a result of, we, we do other awards. Uh, the International ICT Awards has become a fairly big success Correct. for the business yeah. process outsourcing industry. And, yeah. and it has promoted Philippines and Filipinos as, uh, you know, a, a credible and, and uh, highly, very, very good people to, to work with. So that has right. been a big success for the business process outsourcing industry. So this yeah. event is meant to promote Philippines on a regional or even global scale as a credible, you know, opportunity for international business people to, to do business in the Philippines. And we want to make a case to, to put on display the great work that is being done here by both Filipino companies and international companies <coughs> and to show the world that, look, these are the things that others are doing here, and if they can do it, you can too. This is the, the message. So but the, the awards are be gi being given to individuals, not to companies. Okay, there's two sets of awards. There'll yeah. be two awards for individuals. Mm -hmm. One will be for the Filipino CEO, Filipino Executive of, of the Year. Another one will be given to the expatriate or the, the non-Filipino Executive mm -hmm. of the Year. Mm -hmm. the, the other six awards are to um, organizations. So the, the Executive Leadership of, of the Year Award for the, the, the leadership team that has done the most uh, you know, substantial for their own organization and for the country as, as a whole. Mm -hmm. It was an entrepreneurial leadership team of, of the year award mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and others, okay? Um, for, so for a single CEO, whether he's a Filipino or a non-Filipino, what, uh, what is the criteria for him to be awarded, for him to be chosen the CEO of the year? Well, we <laughs> have Besides the jumping that he did a while ago. <laughs> <coughs> well, we have uh, seven judges. Okay. We have, uh, a uh, very impressive, I think, uh, group of, of Bernie people. Bernie Villegas is one of them, yeah. Bern Dr. Bernie Villegas is one of them, a foremost economist throughout, throughout the region. Right. Uh, Francis Estrada, the chairman of De La Salle University, is another right. one. The head of the, the founder and head of the European Chamber of Commerce, the head and of the Asian Japanese Martin. Chamber, Korean and, and other ones. Hmm. So it's, it's a mixed group because it's meant to be yeah. a partnership, an alliance between Filipinos and international people to promote and, and uh, you know, highlight Philippines on the international level. So, so these people will determine, there is a criteria that set aside, but for people who have done something significant that is both significant to their own organizations and significant to the country on a whole and recognizable to people throughout the world as, as something that is significant, something that would be significant, considered significant by people in any country. All right, so uh, that significance would be in the area of the businesses, in the industry, or outside of it? Well, I th we think, I, in my own personal view, is it should be both. If someone keeps his head down and, and just worries about his own business, but doesn't care about the rest of the country or, or people, I don't think that's quite good enough, in my view. <coughs> it has to be a combination of, of both. And uh, two more questions. Number one. Uh, why Filipino and non-Filipino? Why not just a universal CEO or an Asian CEO? That's one question. What is the purpose behind that? What's your objective behind segregating the two communities, expat and non-expat? The second thing you had in your uh, program is that small businesses and big businesses or small enterprise and a big enterprise. What uh, constitutes a big enterprise and what doesn't constitute a big enterprise? <laughs> Why are you You're laughing? getting into some very good questions. Well, here. I want to find out how you run this because uh, this is important. Well, we wanted to emphasize, we wanted to show the world yeah. that there's both Filipinos and non-Filipinos doing good work in, in, in Philippines. Yeah. We felt that, yeah, to, to separate the awards because, uh, you know, sometimes us expats, we naturally know more other foreigners and so naturally we'll give our, our awards to them because we just know them anymore. We wanted to have separate awards, but on the other hand, the Filipinos were saying, well, but Richard, there's a lot more Filipino uh, people to choose from, yeah. so the Filipinos are going to get all the, all the awards. So we thought, well, let's keep it separate so that we can, again, cause our, or do our purpose of promoting Philippines. And, and the purpose is showing an alliance of Filipinos and international people. And so if we've got them both standing up there side by side, we can say, look, it's good for both groups of people. So God forbid you have a Filipino who was born and raised in the U.S. and he becomes an awardee. What do you do then? <laughs> well, the, uh, the award is open to a Filipino 
or Filipino or person of Filipino descent wherever they are in, right. in the world. Okay. Now, how do you constitute a big enterprise and a small enterprise in this country? Well, it's uh, it is a, a topic of of conversation, but yeah. Most people would recognize a large organization as say 500 people or or more. Yeah. This is one kind of very rough uh, idea we have. There's other factors. 500 people to that. or more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas a smaller organization is, is, is less than that. It doesn't have to do with their annual turnover. Well, it could if they're a, if they're a, have very large uh, turnover, but usually people is what uh, the, the focus is. This is. So I want to recommend a friend, a CEO. How do I go about it and how does, how does he get qualified to be one of the potential awardees? Well, on the, uh, the website, uh, asia-ceo.org, you click on the nomination form, fill it out, and send it in. It's easy as that. Now, we can't do that this year, but next year you can, because this year is closed. But yeah. next year you can do it, no charge or anything. You can nominate uh, oh, We'll, we'll show that little picture, and can you just uh, restate the website address, that URL address? There's that sure. image of the Asia CEO Awards, www.asia. Asia hyphen CEO. That's the one. Asia CEO. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, you've got it. Very nice. All right. Now, uh, next question is how is this going to help the Philippines economy or the Philippine business or the man on the street in the Philippines? Well, okay, very good question. If you look at our experience with business process outsourcing, that has come from roughly zero jobs six, seven years ago to half a million today. And what the Filipino guys tell me is because of family structure in Philippines, when you give one person a job that impacts usually 10 other people, right? Because it means that the younger brothers and sisters will have, you know, be able to, to, to have school fees to go to the right schools. The, uh, you know, auntie who, who needs medical treatment is, is able to afford that medical treatment, these kinds of things, right? So that industry, on a credible basis, starting from, from zero, now employs half a million people. So it's impacting the lives of roughly five million people. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if by promoting that one <coughs> industry, we can get half a million people employed here, if by this industry, or the, this event, if, if by promoting all other industries, we believe that we should be able to get at least another half million jobs, that's maybe a, a bold uh, statement, but if one industry, business process outsourcing, can employ half a million people, it's reasonable to say that all other industries combined mm. could employ another half million people. And mm. if, this, if this event helps that process along, as the ICT Awards event has, then you know, this is going to be an exciting uh, situation. And, and it does seem that now today, International people are looking at Philippines again like, like they haven't for you know, many years. Yeah. years. And, and it seems like the time is, is right, right now, that they need a, an alternative to China. You know, Thailand used to be a, a very strong alternative, and it still is, but they've had some political problems lately. It makes people nervous, you know, what's going on. <laughs> Other places, they, they, the cost structure has gotten too, too high, right? Philippines. This is a place to be for now. I think over the next three or four years, this is going to be a place that's going to outdo what Philippines uh, Let's take a little break here. Sure. Huh? We have to again take a break. So we are still with Richard Mills, and we'll come back and talk to him some more about the awards and how you can participate. So stay with us. Okay, very good. <laughs>